Welcome back to Monday Mod Tips, I'm Captain Xavier, and today I'm going to be doing a complete disassembly and reassembly of the Nerf Zombie Strike Hammer Shot. First thing we will take a look at are the controls. There aren't a whole lot of controls on the Hammer Shot. It's hammer primed. Uh, when you pull the hammer back, it should lock into place, and it should rotate the cylinder on prime. Uh, you can still rotate the cylinder manually after it has been primed. There are some revolvers where you can't. When you pull the trigger, it should fire. If it's dry fired, then the cylinder should, or the, the hammer should very slowly return. That means you have a good air seal, which is important. And you can rotate the cylinder more freely when it's not primed. So that's it for controls. Let's get this thing open. They are all, all the screws are exactly the same size. Even the ones that are up in the rail, they used short screws everywhere, so there is no confusion. We can take the shell off without really any concern about things sproinging because there really isn't much to sproing. The only thing you might sproing is going to be your rail retention nub. That spring can occasionally sproing. But uh, the internals kind of come out in one big block. Or can come out in one big block. So that all comes out. And uh, you can, in fact, still prime and fire it, though obviously there's nothing holding the cylinder in place. Uh, there is a screw on the inside of the cylinder if you want to take off the rotation mech for some reason. If you wanted to increase or decrease that spring, you can do that. Um, I'm going to leave that assembled because you really shouldn't need to do anything with it. There is the front... Uh, rotation of blocks in there. There is then a post here that connects that. We will get into that as we disassemble it further. Now we're going to get into the part where things can get a little bit trickier. This is essentially the, the firing internals. There are two more screws in here. They appear to be, yep, the same size. And then this plate can get, oh, one more screw. Oh, and I need a smaller screwdriver to reach that one. Behave your stuff. Okay. Now. Now we can get into what I assume are going to be the two parts that are going to give people problems. the trigger return spring and the cylinder rotation mech. So we can take all of that out. Finally, we have this that can be gotten out somehow. Wacky, there we go, okay. We go through that way. All right. And then uh, the AR is captured in there and it is solvent welded, so I recommend leaving that in place. All right, now that we have it stripped down to just the internal frame, we can start reassembly. Starting with the cylinder rotation arm. This is the part that gets pulled back as you prime the blaster and causes the cylinder to rotate. So it is quite vital. It is also kind of tricky to install. You can see this little gap here. We're going to take the small hooked section and we're going to hook it in under that and rotate it down so that the, the small arm is now pointing up, as you can see. And we're going to slide it in until that arm passes the back of the plunger tube and we can now rotate it upwards. So it's now pointing up, as it were. And this will then allow us to slide it the rest of the way in. There are two uh, notches on the back side. There is a little knob that's just a guide, and then there is the hook for the return spring. Both of those have to get past there. Uh, and then that will go in there. We will be putting in the return spring later. Uh, if you put it in now, there's a good chance that it'll end up, something will get dislodged and it'll fall off while you're uh, putting the other parts in and you may lose it or forget to put it back in and that will mean your blaster 
uh, the cylinder will not rotate. So we will put it in once this has been secured by the other parts. The next part that we're going to put in is actually going to be the trigger. And this is another part that probably uh, is tricky for a lot of people, and that is getting the trigger return spring in here properly. And the easiest way I have found is to first put it on this uh, leftmost post in this configuration. We're then going to slide our trigger down, and you'll notice the trigger has a very small hole on the top of this knob, and that is going to go over that vertical part of the spring. So we're going to put the trigger on so that it's way out of proper alignment, as you can see there. It's almost vertical with the shell, but that will allow us to bring it down on top of that little post on the, on the spring, and then we will rotate it into place. And that will get everything properly aligned, and hopefully we won't unalign anything as we're doing so. You may have to flip it over and adjust the spring in order to get things to sit down properly, but that'll generally get forced into place once you put um, the top plate on. But we now have our trigger in place properly, and it should, if we'll hold it down, yep, it is now properly spring-loaded. The next part we're going to put in is going to be our plunger hammer uh, main spring rod assembly. And again, holding the trigger in place so we don't accidentally spring the spring, we're going to put the plunger into the plunger tube, and then we're going to put the post, the second metal post that's on there, in the lower of the holes on the hammer. And make sure that this is pointed down, and that will have that in place. Now, holding both of those in place with your thumb, rotate it over and make sure that the return arm is behind that post on the hammer. If it's in front of it, which is possible, then it will not rotate the cylinder, because when you pull the hammer back, what is supposed to happen is that that arm gets pulled back with it. And if it's not behind that knob, it won't get pulled back with it, and it won't rotate the cylinder. So if your hammer shot is having an issue where the cylinder is not rotating, it's entirely possible that that arm is not in the right position. Alright, now that we are sure that we have both of those and the return arm all in the right position, we're going to put our cover plate back on. Like so. And it takes three screws that are the same size as all of the shell screws, which is unusual. Internal screws used to always be silver, so you could tell which ones were internal and which ones were external. Uh, they don't do that quite as consistently anymore, which is somewhat slightly disappointing. I mean, it, was, it just made it a little bit easier to tell which ones were going where. And if when you fully reassembled the blaster, you had a silver screw <laughs> lying around, you knew you'd done left something out. All right, now that we have that in place, we are now going to install the rotation arm return spring. To install that, we're going to pick it up and rotate it over. And towards the front of the shell, there is a hook. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera or if I'm even in focus. But towards the front, there is a hook. And then there is a very similar hook on the rotation arm itself. And we're going to take our spring and we're going to hook it over both of those. Like so. Doesn't actually matter which way you have it oriented, but I like it up better. It just doesn't quite rub on things. Now, when we pull back on the rotation arm, it will return properly. As you can see there. That spring is notorious for sneaking off. Um, I had a number of times during uh, this filming where when I turned it over, 
uh, before I had all of this back in place, it would just fall off, which is why I'm installing it now instead of earlier, because now it's being held, the return arm is being held in place by some of the internals, and it can't go too far forward and allow that to fall off. But it's very common for that spring to simply fall off and for you to not even notice, to never even realize, it was, it realized that it was there, that it needs to be there, and then when you go to reassemble your blaster, it won't rotate. The cylinder won't rotate. It'll rotate once when you first put it all back together, and then it won't rotate again. And that is because that return arm is not returning forward because the spring has wandered off. So be aware of that spring. Speaking of springs, we can now install our main spring. Now stock ones flare towards one end, that end goes towards the bottom of the blaster, and that flare helps to align everything. It makes sure that the spring is centered and makes sure that the post goes through the hole on the bottom and doesn't catch on the lip on either sides. So that is why that goes there. We can, in fact, fire it without the rest of the shell. But now, we install the rest of the shell. So this entire assembly can simply be put right inside. It's very handy how easily that just drops in there. Make sure the trigger is in there correctly. The next part we have is the cylinder retention bit. You'll notice it's got a couple of prongs on one side. I don't know if it's focused. A couple of prongs. Those are going to go down so that they go on either side of our cylinder rotation arm. And that in place. Make sure that the rotation arm is still able to move freely. If it gets pinned by that or isn't aligned properly, then the cylinder will not rotate. And finally, we're going to install the cylinder. And it simply locks in over that lug. Make sure that uh, this little ring here is properly in the shell. Uh, on the front, the angled parts go up so that it aligns with the, it'll fit in the shell properly. And that is that. We can now take the other side of the shell and it should just easily lie on top, no problem. If it doesn't go back together easily, then something internally is misaligned and you should check and make sure that everything is lined in correctly. And then you put the screws back in. All the screws are the same, so it doesn't matter what order you put them in. Um, as always, make sure when you are putting the screws in that you rotate counterclockwise until you feel it clunk into place. Uh, the screws, having been removed once, should go back in very easily. If you are having to really torque to get them to go in, then you are cross-threading, uh, which means you are uh, using the thread on the screw to cut whole new grooves in the plastic, and if you do that too many times, you will strip out the screw post entirely and it'll no longer grip the screw at all and the blaster will not hold together properly. So, I do have a video on how to repair screw posts if you have stripped them out. I forgot to mention during disassembly that the first time you open a blaster um, the screws will be rather tight. Um, because they were, when they were put in, they actually probably cut the thread that's holding them in. So they do have a nice tight seal, and you will want to pop that loose first. And to do that, the first time you take out a screw, push a little firmer than you normally would, and give it a sharp twist so that it will actually pop loose. And you'll actually usually hear it kind of pop. Uh, and that is, at that point, you can um, unscrew it much more easily. Um, and it's important to do that because if you don't, if you don't, if you're not pushing good and firm and don't give it a good twist, you risk stripping out the screw head. Uh, now I do have a video on how to remove stripped screws, but it's much easier if you just don't have to do that. All right, we are back together. Let's check our controls. The cylinder will rotate either direction. Yep. Prime and lock. It rotated on prime. Correct. We can still rotate after prime and it fires. So there you go. There is the full disassembly and reassembly of a hammer shot. Uh, the survey for what blasters I will cover 
next time, or which ones I will cover in the future, will be down in the description. Feel free to vote if there's one that you really want to see. Uh, feel free to add new ones. They are categorized. Do try to add them into the right category so it doesn't just end up a big old mess. But that is where I'm choosing which ones to do next based on the votes. Uh, hopefully this was helpful, and thank you guys for watching. Thank <laughs> you.